Good. Well, uh, welcome to the After Party Podcast. My name is Connor Maroney and today I'm joined by a very special guest, long uh, old family friend and uh, Australian Olympic swimmer, Tom Neal. How are you going today, mate? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me on. Mate, of course, of course. It was funny. I was actually uh, talking to Dad the other day. Um, I was yeah. letting him know that uh, you were going to come on and he uh, had a question himself. He was uh, asking if you still get embarrassed uh, about your dad nearly uh, walking around <laughs> cool and shopping in his DTs. <laughs> <laughs> it, I think it's I think it's gotten worse actually. Um, you reckon the confidence yeah. is getting worse and worse? Well, oh, I think the confidence is going up for him. Yeah, um, for sure. Which is, which is probably not a good thing. No, not um, at all. Because he 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 gets down to the beach in his clothing. Yep. Um, then takes his shirt off. You know, okay, that's acceptable. And then and then the Okanui's come off the bottom. So <laughs> like, oh, oh, there he is. <laughs> at least he's he's, he's easy to spot. Um, so yeah, it's no, handy. that's it. The, the bald <laughs> to some man extent, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the mannequin. Yeah, that's him, that's him. That's good, mate. Well, yeah. um, mate, what a crazy fucking year for you. You've been mm. just come back from the Olympics, obviously. How was that whole process? Obviously, it's a completely different, like, style than any of the other Olympics before, yeah. given COVID and all yeah. that other stuff. Was there a big change when, like, you were guys were like initially training in 2020 for it and then it gets pushed out by an extra year? Did that like change anything in your preparation or anything like that at all? Um, yeah, well, being a younger sort of swimmer, that that extra year sort of helped me a lot. Um, I know some of the older guys who were sort of you know not necessarily in swimming, but like some of the tri boys I know were on the verge of sort of retirement, um, didn't know if 2020 was going to be the last year, so they had to push for another year, but but personally, like. When I found out that it was getting postponed another year, I, like there was a bit of disappointment because we were training so well and working real hard. Um, but then again, it's like I've got a I've got a year where I could grow a bit more and and sort of catch up to the bigger boys because at the time I was only I think seventeen turning eighteen, and then you know obviously at trials turning eighteen nineteen. So I'm I'm, I'm up in the opens now, um, and sort of there was no excuse to. To, to be a little boy anymore yeah definitely and th- did you notice that shift like immediately once you did hit that opens and start having those men competitors rather than all the younger fellas you'd been uh, initially raising yeah 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 you know it's sort of it's a bit deceiving um luckily my age group coming up um through like the the age group ranks was highly competitive you know there was a yep. lot of us fighting for the junior spots um and and there was l- real good competition and, and good blokes um alongside you so I was brought up sort of in that competitive um, environment um, and racing those big boys, like I just wanted to see see what I could do against them. You know, I didn't really put any pressure on myself to make the team. I knew it was sort of like a free shot. Um, so I went in there with, with pretty, not low expectations, high expectations of myself, um, but whether or not that, that got on the team, um, I was just going to be happy anyway and, and luckily it came out came out well. Yeah, definitely, man. It looks like you're absolutely killing it against these guys. And, mate, we'll, we'll go back to the beginning of it all, mate. So you were – was it always swimming to begin with for you? Uh, well, not really, actually. Like, we grew up in Hong Kong. Um, yep. As you know, I was born there. Um, then we moved back here in 2010, end of 2010. Um, and I was always swimming, like, mainly just following my brother and sister's um, footsteps. But – to be honest, I, I always wanted to be a, a footy player, a rugby player. Um, you know, I, I grew up not necessarily looking like, you know, at my idols as swimmers, but more like, you know, your Quade Coopers, your Dig Viannis, all that sort of stuff. Um, and like the whole time, like went through Nudgee Junior, then Terrace, I was, I was playing rugby up till grade 10, 11. Um, had a pretty bad, bad leg break in, in uh, grade 8, I think it was, um, playing under 13s and, and that sort of, you know, put a halt on the footy so and then the swimming sort of took off when I was about 15 16 then decided to drop the drop the rugby and um focus full time on that but no yeah I think mixing it up as a as a little kid you know it wasn't just footy and and swimming it was you know doing triathlons doing I think Nutty Junior had canoe polo we were just mixing it right up and 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 keeping it broad sort of really just refresh like keep keep keeps your mind freshed and um you know there's options available everywhere yeah, definitely, because I, I, I can understand that with sports like swimming where you are pretty much training fucking non-stop. You're in yeah. the pool all day, every day. Yeah, like, and, and, it, and it's kind of, yeah, you've got footy where you've got like, I guess, 
more flashier yeah. times and there's a little bit more like difference yeah, yeah, yeah. you're kind of just going up and back in the pool it's do the you, same it's the same sort of thing do you ever day. find like does that ever get to your head a little bit like when you are training like for these huge amounts of periods and whatnot i guess you got the goal there but it is a sort of repetitive and like hard yard yeah sort of something you don't really get to see the results until you get to the big race you yeah. know what i mean uh, does that ever get into your head at all while you're training so, um it does but I think at the end of the day, like you've just got to know that that end goal is what you're doing all this for. Um, and, and you say that it gets boring and, and sometimes it does. I won't lie. Like um, doing the same stuff every day. I think we did the same, uh, we did the same Wednesday morning session, I think 12 weeks in a row. Yeah, um, and yeah. by the 12th week, you're like, righto. But yeah. then again, you like, we've had a break after the Olympics and why you're swimming, you know, that break's coming. Um, you know, the success is hopefully coming um yep. you just got to put it all together and, and you use that sort of that drive um for a break as a little bit of a motivation um you know all the sacrifices you've had for six months or a year you can you can sort of let your hair down a bit after the job is done um and i i use that as a bit of a motivation to 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 work hard and to keep working hard and keep my eyes set on the end goal yeah definitely mate and, and throughout that period as well were, were there anybody that like old swimmers or anyone that you did look up to within the sport that kind of were giving you any help or any uh, pointers throughout that period? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I always look, looked up to Grant Hackett. Um, I think the way he swum, um, his races were just unbelievable. And, and the stories that he, he tells us on, you know, camps and just listening to even like podcasts and stuff about yep. him, um, just the crazy sets he did and, and how hard he worked to to swim well obviously he was in the 1500 so you can't muck around with that sort of no, stuff so he was yeah he was working like a dog so um and one of my mates his his dad actually used to manage him so he sort of got in touch with me after junior world in 2019 and you know just checked in saying you know if you need a hand with anything blah 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 being real nice and stuff um and then after each sort of benchmark be pretty sick. yeah exactly yeah. right and and before the olympics we all got like a alumni letter um and mine was from grant as well and and he sort of just stated out like look um you know people say treat the olympics like any other meet um but he thought that that was sort of like the worst advice you can give <laughs> yeah. someone because it seriously is like nothing else like when he was there he was saying he had muhammad al not muhammad ali was it ali? i don't know it was, it was a bo- famous boxer and um you know like Djokovic and nadal they're eating, yeah, yeah, eating yeah. lunch right next to him while he's about to go some of 1500 sort of thing it's like it's it's nothing like anything it's um, otherworldly yeah, yeah and it yeah it is another world and and you j- like nothing will prep it for you but it's the the people who can handle that that change the best who often perform the best for sure man and, and do you find that there is like a bit of a difference in the competitive level like i mean Obviously, at the Olympics, everyone's there to win gold. But, I mean, like, is there a little bit of, like, angst and whatnot in the nationals and the sort of competitions leading up to it? Because, I mean, everyone's fighting for that position yeah. there. Like, do you find that that's almost, like, a bit, like as tense as the Games as well? Yeah, well, you know, being an Australian swimmer, it is so, so competitive. And it is, like, it is a four-year cycle. Yeah. Um, you know, that's that's pretty much the end goal for everyone. Um, sure. The, the years leading up to it is just leading up to the Olympics. Um, and at the end of the day, it comes down to one week of racing um, to get on the team. And, yeah. and it's a brutal, brutal selection process. You know, it's top two um, and a qualifying time, which is often the hardest part. Um, I think in the 400 free this year, we had five five people go under the qualifying time oh, which, it, which is based Christ. off the previous year's top eight in the world so essentially you had five australians in the top eight of the world um but you can only take two so yeah, it's pretty special like if you make the australian swim team like you you're good and, yeah. and you're ready to go so it, it is a brutal system but um if, if you can get on it's it's pretty prestigious um and I was just stoked to be a part of the, the team this year. Are you training with a lot of these guys as well that you are competing against throughout the year? I'd imagine you would like end up in similar camps and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we've got a, we've got a good crew at the moment. Um, yeah, a few few distance boys that that we push each other against, and then obviously we have the camps. You know, they run like twice a year, often like a week long, and that's when you just go head to head, a bit of a ding dong battle, and it's just like that's often the best weeks of training that you can get under your belt because. We are all so competitive and, and we, we respect one another. They're all good blokes, but you just hate to lose them. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I yeah. completely get that. You want to rip their fucking heads off. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. You've got to get onto that team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, man, and then obviously you get the call that you're going to Tokyo. Th- that must be dream come true. Talk us through kind of the emotions of finally getting that shot where you 
more so happy that you got it or were you more like, okay, oh, it's time. I've really got to prove myself now. Yeah. Well, I think because um, I, I missed the 400, I got fourth in that and then the 200 was next. Um, and I, I knew they, they have to take the top four. Um, yep. And I, I, the last 50 of the two, I, I, I didn't really know where I was. I, just, I was just putting my head down and going. And then when I touched the wall, I saw third and I think the, the words were – Fuck yeah, I'm on, boys. I <laughs> just yelled it out. Um, no, one, no one was listening to me, so it's all right. But yeah. um, but I was just so stoked. And then to look up, um, see my old man and the rest of my family just going ballistic, and oh, then and then again just nuts. hopping out, seeing the coach. It, yeah, it 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 was a moment of just like I can I can enjoy this one. Um, For sure, especially being so young as well, yeah. being in there. What's that? We've got a bit of fucking <laughs> poor <laughs> music going. Music, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what? Is that us? Showing <laughs> <Jonah>. that. <laughs> Back to that. Um. <laughs> that was annoying. Um, yeah, yeah, so you'd just gotten out of the pool and stuff and seeing all your coaches Yeah, and seeing the and coach stuff. was unreal. And then, you know, warming down, just couldn't wipe the smile off my face. Um, and then, obviously, coming out of the pool, families there with the car, just Simo was, Simo was in tears, everyone was in tears. Oh, I was mate. just so happy. But, um, you know, there, it was still a big, big week ahead. I still had the, the 8 and 15 left um, and did okay. And then probably would have liked to have gone a bit better. But um, at the end of the day, I got, I got on for – for what I needed to, and and yeah, for sure. Is it is it kind of difficult, like balancing the, the different styles of races each like time? If you are like, I guess you're training for it all the time, but yeah. I mean, is there anything that you prefer more so, the shorter distances or long ones? Or um, I, I my personal favourite's the four hundred, um, and it is hard to sort of balance like coming down to the two hundred because the two hundred's a funny one. You have the the people who come up from the hundred, like the sprinters yep. who come up, and then you have the distance sort of boys who come down, um, and it's all just fighting for the that top sort of six or top four spot for that relay yeah, yeah, um, yeah. but in those weeks as well it's like talking about balance is also like balancing the emotion um because you know i found like in earlier years as a as a sort of age group swimmer i found like i'd get so happy after one race and in, in, at the start of the week and it just drain you so much oh, like man. and you just have no idea like you think you're feeling good you think you're feeling good but you you're wasting all this energy and in, in you know, being, being so happy, yeah, and being yeah. so pumped, this adrenaline rushing, and then you know you're losing sleep, you're not focusing on the next race, um, and those big weeks of racing, you've really just got to you know sort of keep the highs low and the lows high, yeah. um, and just keep real level headed, um, which is tough to do sometimes, but if you can get that right, you, yeah, you give yourself the best shot. Yeah, definitely, man, and then. So going up there, I'm just even imagining now nearly losing yeah. his fucking oh, mind. No. <laughs> he was so <laughs> he stoked. Have, he would have been so he stoked. Was so stoked. I guess, man, with swimming, like more probably more than any other sport as well, like the parents are just as involved yeah. as the kids. Oh, like they're for sure. taking it, you're training all yeah. the time from like a ridiculously young age. Yeah, like they, they've rode so the wave involved. the whole way through for sure. Yeah, um, definitely. And they weren't able to go over to no, which Tokyo was there, yeah, it was pretty unfortunate. But they had um the swimming Australia set up like a, all the pods. It's like parents of dolphins. Or, yep. or something like that and then they set up something at Noosa which was I think just the big schoolies week for them um, yeah. and morning finals they were on the piss by 9am so yeah no fucking they were all well, set yeah, yeah. dad's dream yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no no oh, no we, it was unfortunate they couldn't come but you know we were FaceTiming once a day and then and he was loving it back from home, but but hopefully I'm still young and there's there's a, another one in me that oh they can man. they, yeah, they I'm can sure come to. They'll, they'll yeah. have a lot more events to go to, man. Yeah. And th with that there as well, I guess another thing they don't really speak on, but you could see it clearly throughout the games, like how important that coach and uh, athlete uh, relationship yeah. is there as well. Yeah. I, I'd imagine you would have to have a lot of like trust in them and like to get to like wherever you need to get to, their training styles, mm. all different, like I guess there's so many different variabilities yeah. that yeah, they bring yeah, to yeah. the table as well because you can have a shit coach mm. and yeah, really sure. stuff well, things yeah. up. Talk about that. Who, who's your coach at the moment and sort of your building relationship with them? Um, so I'm with Damien Jones at the moment at Centenary Pool yep. um, under Rackley. Um, he, he wasn't able to come over to the, oh, to the really? games. So they only take six six sort of coaches. Um, For the whole team, essentially. Yeah, so you sort of get put in coaching groups. Yep. And I was with Vince Raley, um, who coaches Jack McLaughlin, yep. Zach Stubbity-Cook. And, and he was really good. And him and Damo are really close. So 
So they and they have sort similar coaching styles, and, and we got along well. Um, but no, I've been with Damo. Uh, well, my brother and sister were with them since about 2012, 2013, yeah. I reckon. So and and now you know he's sort of he's not just like a, a coach. It's not sort of a coach relationship. It's more like a mate yeah, sort of relationship. Sure. Like I get to training and first sort of 30 minutes before we hop in we don't we don't talk about swimming you know we talk about the the footy on the weekend what multi's got up or lost you know it's it's, (laughs) it it is just like normal stuff you talk about with any other mate um and it's it's good that we we trust each other um and and we're loyal to each other so yeah it's nice having a coach who's so supportive of you not just in the pool but you know what you are as a bloke um and and yeah he's a yeah he's big emphasis on you know you're a good bloke first and a a very good swimmer second so and yeah so yeah it it is very good to to have a coach like that and we've been with him for ages so yeah well it's funny yeah you you definitely need like a good coach or anybody to keep you in line because i mean you kind of see it a lot in the swimming community as well. Mm. There are some pretty loose units that yeah. float around as well. <laughs> I think I kind of like the way I look at it is that a lot of these blokes, like you can attribute it to just non-stop training all the time yeah. and kind of being deprived of like a good social life. That yeah. As soon as they get a sniff yeah. or <laughs> yeah, they well, dive head first into yeah, it. Yeah, no, seems. that's exactly right. Um, you know, we are, we are pretty heavily driven in training. Um, when, when it's go time, it's go time. Um, and you sort of lose... It's it's it is difficult to maintain a balance, you know, whether it's between uni mates um, and swimming. Um, and the biggest thing that that I want to do is is not lose, uh, you know, my schoolmates. Um, yeah. You know, you see that time and time again, swimmers sort of get so involved, which is fine. You know, sometimes that's what you have to do to be the best. But I think it's like for me anyway, it's about f- sort of finding that that balance um, between your social life. You know making sure you're not robotic um, and yep. just, yeah, keeping keeping your social life up so so you are happy because I find, like, when that stuff's going well, everything else is going well. Like yeah, you, definitely. When your uni's going well, you're swimming well. Like, it's just about keeping mentally refreshed and happy, I think. Yeah, definitely. You need the boys there at the finish Yeah, line exactly. Oh, well. and they, they were unreal. I think they were, they were at the Newey on, on, the, on my first race, the Newmarket Hotel, just sinking tins. Going and bonkers. Yeah, <laughs> and there was a video of them when I got up. <laughs> they were, yeah, and they were, they were actually going to come down to, to trolls on the last night for a bit of a celebration, but they couldn't string the tickets together. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, but no, nah, they're oh. so supportive. and it, it is good just to have such a good support base around. Me. Yeah, bro, that's so sick. And so when we've uh, you've actually headed over uh, to the games at this point, and I follow a fair few of the different athletes and mm. stuff that were there, and it looked initially like everyone was just going like, "Holy shit!" At some of the people that were yeah. there, did you run into any uh, cool athletes and stuff um, you weren't really expecting? Oh well, Barty was there for the for the um, opening sort of ceremony yep. before that, and. Like I said, I'm a big footy fan. So I was in the elevator with uh, Karevi for a bit. Yep. Uh, I didn't say anything. I was just there, but <laughs> <laughs> I was, it was just me. Busy, it was bro. just me and all these sevens boys. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll get How off at the next stop. Busy yeah. As well. like, you're there a tall bloke, but he's man, just like I know, thick. Like, <laughs> he's a thick boy. <laughs> thick dog, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, there are a few N- NBA players. Um, um, but no one sort of like real stood out like oh yeah Karevi I guess you're so guy. focused like yeah and that's the thing like well. you don't want to get too caught up in yeah, yeah, like yeah 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 um, and you know this year like I, I haven't been to Olympics before but they were saying like because of COVID like you go to the dining hall and you go back like and sort of try eat breakfast back at back at the apartment um, just minimise literally leaving your room yeah, um, yeah. And which the other boys were saying who went to Rio and London they were saying yeah that's a bit unfortunate and also you know swimming finishes on the first week so you have sort of the second week to, to let loose a bit um, and obviously we had to come home the day after we finished racing yeah that's and straight sucks. into quarantine so that 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 was a bit of a you know Debbie Downer but um at the end of the day we got to race and have a bit of fun so yeah yeah definitely man and because uh, I guess like I guess the opposite to that, though, as well, is that when you get there, it's sort of similar to what your conversation with Hackett is about. Mm. Is like you see all these other people around, you're like, holy shit, we're like we're yeah. here. It's yeah, the, yeah, the creme yeah. de la creme, and, you, and you've watched Olympics your whole life, especially the swimming, yeah, man. Yeah. Like, what, how different was that than any other? Like you mentioned before, you said it's like any other meet, but it's definitely not. Yeah. When you're walking in that arena, you're seeing all these blokes like yeah. all ready to go nuts. Like, yeah. did you get that sense of like nerves and all that? Or yeah, all yeah, way, yeah. You're pretty good at keeping it down. Um. Well, like the, these blokes who I'm swimming beside have I've watched them yeah. um, 
<laughs> since I was like yeah. 12 years old, which was like the weirdest thing for me. Like I remember when I was, I think, 14 or, 15, or I think it was 14, watching with my, my old man, watching Mac win the win the 400 in Rio and then he's sleeping in the room next to me sort of thing. Yeah. And, and like, it's like, oh, well, this is a bit weird. <laughs> I'm like racing inside these blokes. And it's sort of still sinking in that like, you know, you're, you're a part of that now. Um, Completely, man. Which is, I don't like to, you know, make that fuel an ego or anything but no. like uh, i am proud that that i can i can you know be called like alongside these names um and you know yeah i, I do i am one to sort of get nervous um i try to you know not not show it but um i remember in that relay anchoring oh yeah very very nervous as soon as i found out oh you know i was eating my brekkie shaking sort of stuff and there was only like three hours to go before the race because I, I thought i was going first um the oh, whole really? time yeah 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 i thought i was going first and then um, on the on the morning of the race, I woke up and Mac did the heat, and I went and talked to him. I was like, "How's the heat, mate?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Blah blah blah, talking about. It. And I was like, "Do you know the order after me?" And he's like, "Mate, you're anchoring." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, thanks for telling me, guys." <laughs> so, who comes up with that decision? Is it a team based thing or the coach? Or? Yeah, so each of the coaches get a get a relay. Um, and yep. Vince was the the coach of the men's four by two so um he put me last and alex graham first um kyle second and yeah zach and 33rd so it was a good team and uh, i think like i swam a second quicker in the relay than i did in the individual um and i think that that sort of team environment brings out the best in people um you Definitely know that adrenaline man. was was pumping and oh and it bro was it was just, bonkers yeah, like i was nah. at work and yeah. we had got all the tvs on in there and everyone's losing their minds yeah. like <laughs> yeah. I, I was gonna say like it must be so chaotic in the moment because i mean like you're seeing it is it do you find like you you know exactly where you are at that point like in regards to the race um, or are you just sort of like oh, i'm just gonna go absolutely nuts here yeah well going last obviously you see the whole race unfold um and i saw you know the brits were out in front they were the red hot yep. favorites um and they were out in front i was like right oh it's obviously a sort of fight for the minor minor medals here yep. um and then i saw the last 50 sort of where everyone was um jumping in um gave a look to my left the russian and the right i think the yanks were over there and it was all sort of all four of us i think it was italy uh russia the aussies us um and the yanks and yep and I was like, all right, <laughs> let's go to work, boys. <laughs> so yeah. he gets out on top. And um, yeah, no, it was just that I didn't want to give up that that bronze because I knew I wasn't just giving up for myself. I'm giving up for three other blokes. Um, Definitely. And that's something like whether that's, you know, fostered in the, in the, in the rugby, you know, down uh, when I was a junior, like playing team sports, I, I, I thrive off that sort of stuff. Um, and to anchor that was, it was, it was nerve wracking, but um, I'm glad that, that I got the job done um, and you know the other three boys set it up perfectly all I had to do was just put the cherry on top of the cake yeah man well you were, you were chasing them down and god it must be like you guys you don't really know I guess hey and because everything's so like split seconds we're working off like tenths of a second yeah like, for a lot of the time swimming it, it, is it exactly like did you know you'd come it's got the bronze at that point or is it literally until you get your head out and check the screen um well i, I knew we after the first hundred because i was breathing to the left um and i saw the russian sort of took off um in front of me and then i could see the other two uh the italians and the americans sort of drop behind in the last 50 i was like right i think we've got the bronze here but let's let's try snag a silver so I tried to come at that the Russian on the last bit, but um, he nip, nipped us by I think 0.03, uh, which is a bit annoying. But um, <laughs> but so in the day, I still saw a third, and you know the goal was to to win, but to to get a medal if not win. Oh, um, mate. And, and yeah, we, we we were so we were stoked. Yeah, bro. Combined with your age and also like yeah. it was your last chance of getting one as well for that yeah. week as well. Which yeah, is so sick that yeah. you snagged it off, and mate. Olympic medals and Olympic yeah, medals. Yeah, exactly right. I got it for so the rest of your sick. life. So yeah, I'll man. take it. Yeah, yeah definitely. And yeah. like, was it kind of nice? I mean, after some of the boys not really coming away with uh, probably the best results that they'd wanted to, kind of doing it together at the end, was that kind of like a, a nice uh, touch at the end? Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, doing doing anything with the team is so much sweeter than just, you know, doing it with yourself because you've got people to share it with. Yep. Um, and I think... Like racing alongside those blokes there, you know, three, three of the best blokes in the team. Um, and I was just stoked to, to sort of be a part of them. You know, they've been on the team for so long. Kyle is an Olympic gold medalist. Tiggs has, um, you know, been on the team for ages. So is Zach. Um, and, to, and to just be, you know, introducing that team um, and whether they were, you know, consciously or subconsciously um, taking me under their wing. Um, you know, Jack McLaughlin and Mac Horton were real good with that. And Zach, somebody cool come. It, yeah, it was just unreal to sort of be a part 
of that Australian team because we were so successful and, and, you know, to say that I was a part of it is, yeah, something that I'll, I'll be proud of. Yeah, the small definitely, off. mate. And the girls were going off as well. Yeah. They were oh, they killing nuts, it. yeah. <laughs> um, is there, like, do you guys hang with them a fair bit as well? Like, throughout there, are you able to get out to their, like, races and everything like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were able to um, – so swimmers are allowed to watch. Yeah, the, okay, um, cool. The, the athletes were allowed to go and watch. Um, so, like, the first couple of days when ev- everyone was still sort of prepping for their their races it was pretty quiet but um as the week progressed and people started finishing their swimming the the stands were actually quite full um and i remember on the last relay like it was a it was a buzz like the the atmosphere was there definitely yeah man that's so cool and then obviously after you were kind of mentioning that like yeah you don't really get to have all the the fun that you usually (laughs) would afterwards man like talks through that like what did it i guess like for your first one you get it must be just be fun in general, but I mean, like you also would have been on the team with other guys as well who have been to previous ones. Was there a little bit of that feel of like we're kind of just over here to put in work and leave, or because like I mean, yeah. usually it's so much of more of an experience yeah, than I know. just that. Yeah, our celebration was a two weeks quarantine, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, a dry two weeks quarantine yeah, as well. Uh, <laughs> so we we ours. were <laughs> able to, to sort of have the last night to to rip and tear a bit, um, so we made the most of that, but. But then again, like coming coming home, um, like I was I was sort of ready to come home and, and see my mates again and, and celebrate with them. Um, and you know we we organised a little little pub crawl, um, yeah. starting out at Boona, finishing at the Camp Hill, um, which which was good fun. Um, and it's just sort of the things like you got to make the most of it now because before you know it, we're we're going to be back uh, working hard again and you For know sure. the eyes set on next year. Did it as well, like, did it feel pretty, like, hardly governed, though? Like, when you were over there, like, it was very strict with all the different yeah. steps you had to make. Like, I mean, they even had fucking foam beds. Oh, God, yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, actually, let's get into the bed then. <laughs> the anti-chongers. Oh, mate, I've got, like, so many questions about the fucking beds. Because it's so stupid. Like, first things first. If people are going to fuck, they're not going to do it. Like, they're, they're athletes. They're probably gymnasts and shit. They're not going to be bloody <laughs> just lying yeah, they're down. They're bloody yeah. <laughs> get them on their shoulders or something. But <laughs> yeah. with that as well, like, but, surely, not, yeah. but like, uh, like, surely their first priority is to give the athletes the best possible, like, recovery and everything like that as well. <laughs> you well, think so. you got some big boys. Like, I can't yeah. imagine Samu Karevi holding up those boxes. He oh, goes yeah. Through yeah. The bars and things. walking through, you know, Yao Ming was there. I'm like, that. That man oh, needs mate. about four of these yeah. things, <laughs> and, and let alone the weight. You know, I think he's yeah. forged straight through that. Yeah, of course, man. Did any of that like did that like piss you off coming to play at all, or were they actually the, kind of can't be? The <laughs> I didn't really mind them to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see the whole issue. Um, I know the next door in Mac and Zach's room, they they had this like humidifier thing that cracked, and all the water sort of leaked through and got into the cardboard, and oh, Mac jumped no. in one day and, and <laughs> fell straight through, uh, which was not ideal for him. But but to be honest, I didn't really mind it. We had these little ex- extension things, um, which barely even fit me. So I don't know how the the basketballers are doing it. Oh to be man, honest, like, yeah. But yeah, it must be a nightmare for them. But but I, I got I got my eight hours at night. I, You're all crazy. <laughs> I, was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't um you know I wouldn't swap my current bed back here for yeah, it. But, nah, um, but, but like yeah, if it's for for ass. a couple of weeks, I'll deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny ass man. Um yeah, and so then when, once you head back, you're in your quarantine and all the the boring stuff. So mm. now you you sort of mentioned to me earlier that you're training, but there's nothing really too like serious mm. for now. How much like. I guess you already are sort of starting to train for it because yeah. it is that four-year cycle, but at what point does it really start revving up towards focusing on that next Olympics? Is it now? Is it in a year? Or is it, it will literally get when you get closer to that period? Um, well, like for me, I, I remember finishing, I got a text from my coach saying, all right, we've got three years, then we're going to win. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> It's sort of like you think about it straight away, but yeah. it, it is so important to have a, a break, not just yeah. physically, but mentally. Um, it's four fucking years. Yeah, man. exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. Um, and, and there are checkpoints along the way. Like next year is a very big year. There's, there's world Worlds uh, in April or something. Where's that at? Um, that's in Japan again. Oh, Not the same pool, I don't think. Uh, different area, but still in Japan. And then Comi Com Games are in July next year. Yeah, so right. pretty big year. Um, and then pretty much now, it just all starts again. Like the you know, although you made the Olympics, you, you got to make these teams again. The the whole selection process just starts New again. New guys coming through. Exactly yeah. right. Exactly right. Um, so and that's the thing. Like you got You got to hold your spot now. You, you're on it, and now you put pressure on yourself to to hold your spot on the Australian team and then go on the international stage and perform better. Um, so it, it, it does ramp up pretty quick. Um, but in saying that, the break 
has been good, um, you know, catching up with everyone, just doing what a normal 19-year-old would do. Um, that, that's sort of the stuff I, I missed and found hard leading up um, to trials and stuff in the Olympics. But, yeah, you got to make the most of these things because, you know, yeah, th- it's going to ramp up very quickly um, and, yeah, it's going to start start going again. But in terms of the cycles, it, it, it is all working towards um, the Olympics, you know, like that's that's all – Australians care about yeah, um, you know you, you, you talk about you are, if you ask someone on the street who's the world champion in this they don't know but if you ask them who's the Olympic champion they're, they're more likely to know that sort of thing so um, yeah, it's good it, that you guys have your goals though in between. Yeah, that's exactly. The last like, thing I want to be doing exactly right. So yeah, yeah, four years away. Every yeah, which time. is just brutal. Like I know for me personally, like when I'm training, I need I need something to train for. Sort yeah, of thing. Um, I'm I'm not the sort of bloke who who would just go for a swim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Like I want an end goal. I want a purpose. Um, and that that sort of helps my motivation, yeah. Definitely, man. And, and is it, what would you say, like, the peak age is for, like, swimmers? Is Because, I mean, like, fighters, for instance, like, around that yeah. 30 to 32 is usually yeah. when you hit your yeah. peak. Like, everyone kind of does rugby players, 27, 28, yeah, 29. Yeah, yeah. Like, is there a sort of peak period for you guys? Um, I, I don't know what it is now. I, I think it used used to be like sort of 20, 22 to 26. Like it's a pretty yeah. broad range, but it, it, it has come down, I think, recently. Um, you know, Phelps, he was in Rio. I think he was like 32 or something yeah, and still okay. winning gold. Um, yeah. I think he's a... You know, in a league of his own, but yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the goat. Um, but the girls are a lot younger. Um, yep. I know that. Um, but in terms of age, like the next one, I think I'll be twenty-two. So just you know, starting out, hopefully, hopefully peaking. Um, peaking but then, yeah. Thor- you know, Thorpey was winning winning gold when he was seventeen, sort of thing. Yeah, um, I guess it's so like in particular. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, 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 so it can much. be different for everyone. Um, like, hopefully, hopefully, I haven't peaked yet, and hopefully, yeah, we just keep <laughs> yeah, going nah, up. I don't think you would have peaked yet. <laughs> oh, <not>. That'd be <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Man, and, and you're sort of saying like now you do kind of get to have that break and sort of uh, join the boys and sort of do the stuff you want to get done a little bit more than just uh, swimming. What is yeah. your sort of escape these days? Because I'd imagine you don't want to be your escape to be like getting on the piss. All yeah, the time. yeah, exactly. Exactly. I want to have a fucking beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the past five weeks has been that. Yeah, well, no, mate, and you deserve to. Yeah, yeah, I'm, all, I'm all for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> but sure I mean, from t- yeah, yeah. Mate, but time like going on, I mean, I mean, your brother and stuff, he gets into his triathlon yeah, and yeah. Sort of stuff. Do you like to mix up like your training with a bit of fun in that respect, or is it pretty much just um, stick to the pool? I, I do stick to the pool. Like this, this sort of period where we, you know we're getting back into it is where we'll mix it up. Like uh, I think this week we just uh, signed up for the family Noosa try, so I'll, I'll jump <laughs> yeah. on the swim. Lockie, he'll jump on the bike, and my sister's boyfriend will jump on the run. And um, you'll probably dust everyone. Yeah. <laughs> That's the plan. Yeah. <laughs> Simo hasn't, you know, got his curling sliders. <laughs> oh, no. He's yeah, doing mate. the full thing this oh, year, oh, actually. Oh, yeah, is yeah, he? yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, we bought him a full entry. Oh, um, that would be so good. <laughs> um, but no, like during training. Like, you know, I'm into my motorsport, so, you know, like when I'm home, I'll, you know, just be looking up cars, playing car games, um, watching F1, watching V8s, MotoGP. Um, yep. I'm trying to get into a bit of golf now um, because, you know, it, it, it does get boring sort of on like weekends when your mates are sort of planning, oh, let's go to the pub this half, you know, let's see yeah, a few yeah. tennis. And like, I'll go, um, you know, course, for a little man. bit. I've got to go, you know. Yeah, you, you played 19, man. Yeah, exactly. Like, I've, I've got to go and you know, catch up with them all, but it does get tough when you when you're sort of balancing like you're right, I've got a big one Monday morning. I can't I can't be silly here. Yep. Um and just bringing it back to the rugby, Benny Benny Mullen was actually really, really yep. good with that. He he helped me out. Um well not helped me out, but sort of just mentored, I guess, to some extent. Um he was he's good mates with my coach, um and the assistant coach at Rackley. Um yep. and there was a period where I was eighteen, like, you know, you know, twice a week, every week on the weekends, just, you know, uh, sending myself a bit too hard um, yeah, and yeah, not yeah. not sort of getting carried away with that sort of side of things um and they just you know Benny Benny was so good with that he's like mate you, you got to be human I was human but you, you've got a job to do as well um and you know if you set your goal like you know 
once once every couple of months decide to have a bit of a blowout let you let your hair loose a bit um yeah. that, and that's something you can look forward to and use as motivation um and he was really good and helped me out with that sort of side of things and now you know he's still he still texts me saying yeah great job great job Mate, and yeah he's, he's a good uh, mentor to yeah have. no he's, he's a beast he's, he's, he's a running very around good bloke, killing yeah. all of us last year yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah he was like shredded he's like six. 34 yeah. or something like that I was like <laughs> yeah. fuck off he's so jacked <laughs> dude he's a freak and he wears all the pads yeah. and looks like a yeah yeah yeah, yeah legit you know, like an action like, figure like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he's trying to rip your head off yes fuck the time yeah six of six no no, negative. Not anymore. No, not anymore. We're back oh, on top, baby. Yeah, um, yeah man. I, I guess like when you're over for the Olympics, there's such a like a big like uh, broad like set of sports that you do have your golfers and stuff yeah. like that. Do you ever like link up with any of those boys and try to? I guess you could have a bit of fun with, through some of the athletes. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Um, you don't really get to interact. With well, them that's the thing. Much. Like they were, you know, the boys who have been on you know other olympics they said you could do that like you could go eat with these blokes at the dining hall and just have a yard for a couple of yeah, hours about definitely. what they do and then all of a sudden you're you're playing golf with them or something like that you're doing their sport yeah. like when you get back home um but this was sort of like it was just swimmers like we we did sort of everything together and and in saying that we we built a, a culture that was like a family um you know we were in a bubble in cans for for three or four weeks before we even got to tokyo so we, we were forced to be with each other um, which, you know, people can say is annoying. Um, but, but for me, I found that we got so close to each other and we weren't just racing for ourselves; We were racing for one, one another. Definitely, man. Especially in those relays. Like I'm sure yeah. knowing each other well definitely Yeah, exactly helps. right. Exactly right. Man, we'll, we'll kind of finish off on, uh, one last little topic. I was just thinking about, I've spoken about it with like a bunch of other athletes and stuff, whether it's in footy, AFL and everything like that. But I've always been such a believer in bringing like a fun side to professional sports and like kind of having a bit of like injecting a bit of personality mm. into it instead of just going like credit to the boys yeah this that all the time <laughs> and and you were actually giving some fun speeches um, like uh, after there mate uh, talk us through that like is there because it's all on fucking channel seven yeah. and it's all like so like <laughs> stiff as a board yeah the, I know. it was um uh. is there any like worry when you are having those ones after or do you like to kind of add your personality and a bit more fun into oh, it? No. Well, after the relay, I said it was better than Lego. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and I, I, I said to my my sister, my sister's boyfriend, who who actually showed me the video like earlier in the year. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. John Sand, yeah. the funniest thing I've ever seen. So and I said, he's off his dial. Yeah, <laughs> he's so pissed. Yeah. <laughs> and Joey comes in. It's good. It's good stuff. Good content. Um. But no, I said to him, I was like, mate, if I get a medal, I'm saying it. He's yeah. like, good. It was so premeditated. Yeah. <laughs> but I said, look, mate, if, if, if I get a medal, I'm saying it. <laughs> I've got to say man. it. Um, oh, well, it's luckily good, people bro. liked it. But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah no, no. It, it's good, man. When everyone starts to see, I think like a little bit more personally, it gives it just a bit more life. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Sport and you remember the guy and you're yeah. supporting them. Oh, that. exactly. Like all that stuff, I'll just, you know, I'm not going to pretend to be someone I'm not. Exactly. Um, I'll, yeah. I'll just get up there and be myself. I'll, I'll, I'll try. I call it how it is but obviously be respectful um yeah so so i approach all that sort of stuff too easy man awesome well uh hopefully you keep doing that keep being you mate yeah. and um good luck with all the uh congratulations for one on uh, a great campaign this year and then uh good luck with everything you got coming uh, your way mate how can um everyone uh, find you on your socials and all your different stuff like that as well uh no thanks connor um oh, i think it's tommy.neil is my instagram um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much all I know. And then just yeah, Tommy Neil on Facebook. <laughs> Too easy, man. Well, they'll all be able to find you. I'll, I'll start sharing the shit out of it. Yeah, um, <laughs> <Good> stuff. <laughs> we'll be popping it off, mate. Um, yeah. Too easy. So uh, thanks for watching this uh, episode of the After Party Podcast. Uh, go check out our uh, page on YouTube AFA TV and uh, on Instagram After Party Podcast underscore. All good. This episode of the After Party Podcast was brought to you by the Lad Collective. Now, um, big fella, this is uh, Eddie and Bill Obenden's, uh yeah. brand. You know them from uh, Terrace, and they've uh, basically tried to make sheets good for blokes again. Yeah. Mate, what's the uh, the sheet situation at home like for you? Is mum all over it, or is it uh, looking a bit yeah, dry look, and right? She, she's uh, she's trying to get me to to be all over it, but um, yep. I, I keep refusing. So this might be a, a decent little shout. Yeah, mate. I think this is going to get you going. We've got our bottom left bottom right top left top right tag so you don't get confused yeah, man i'm sure need. that's what i need yeah, yeah man, the, bra <laughs> the brain's rotting out from all the chlorine you need it to be nice and simple that's it. so yeah you can tuck them in there uh 60 bamboo 40 percent cotton so they breathe easy mate yeah, that's what could you have want. bloody taken that's these to tokyo oh, mate, and whack them on yeah. the cardboard the anti-chongers yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like 
all right. <laughs> no, these things are all for it. They, yeah. They'd get you in the mood for sure as well, mate. So um, <laughs> if you want to get a pair of your own, uh, jump on theladcollective.com.au or check out their page at The Lad Collective. And, mate, uh, they'll get you all uh, sorted and get your sheet together, as they say. Dang, how good's that? Thank really, you. Really, mate. How good. <laughs> how good.